One of the use cases I have for my riding knife is one with a very sharp tip because I need to be able to basically pop these bubbles, which happens when the ammonia, I guess it's ammonia, that in tubeless tires, the, the stuff that you pour in there, causes a separation of the outside rubber and the inside structure. So I need to just poke through this outside layer to relieve that pressure, otherwise it'll start to separate the rubber entirely. So one of the great knives for that is the uh, Sea Snake. This is a Mike Endler design. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I use this as my trail knife. So again, I just need a very finite, small poke to get through there, but not get to the inside infrastructure. Oh, I think I got it there. Oh, yep. Actually, this one was just an air bubble, so that was nice. Because um, I, you don't want that separation of those two layers. What's up, YouTubers? Today we're going to talk about the Artisan Cutlery Sea Snake Fixed Blade Knife. This is designed by Crazy Sharp himself, Mike Emler. Um, I really kind of like the design. Not kind of, I really like the design actually. Um, this knife sports a 3.16 inch blade of AR RPM 9, which is kind of Artisan Cutlery's proprietary less stainless D2. Um, and I will say it for my part just from the outset it did seem to retain edge a little bit less than D2 that I've had from like CGRB or Artisan themselves um, But I will say it was definitely very stainless. I was around water. This was you know outside for the better part of a year um, Not the entire time, but that's where I spent most of its time on my carry and uh, you know So that's all I'll say about that. It weighs 3.0 ounces with the sheath and it prices at $50 So let's talk about the sheath and we'll talk about the use case because the sheath on a fixed blade really is about half the equation this is a well-sized and well-proportioned sheath it's not one huge one like you know double pancake size so it's a taco style they folded it in half and then it's got some you know whole uh, mounting and i did utilize that with some with the basically some rope and lashed it to my uh, camelback my water bag for mountain biking and hiking um, for for the year and it did great you know We'll talk about some uh, comparison ones that I did, or what I, sorry, that I compare it to is, we'll bring it up uh, last year's, which was the SE Zancudo. That was last year's carry, and I'll go ahead and link that review up there uh, if you want to check that one out. But that I pretty much carried that one last year. Um, I need something small, thin, a good tip, that sort of thing. So that was my very specific use case here. 
Um, you know, other alternatives and comparisons that you might do is, you know, you could get one of the little bit sm uh, larger ones, the CRKT Foltz Design Minimalists. They have a little bit larger ones, like there's the one with the Persian and so forth. I just happen to have the <laughs> little cleaver here. But, you know, those are little, those are kind of small knives. That they're in that range. Um, the Minimalist weighed 2.5 ounces, and I, I forget, maybe this one was about 4 ounces, a little bit beefier. Uh, I did actually buy the original one with the carabiner hole, but then I later didn't like the comfort on that one, so I replaced that one um, with the solid on the Essie. So the Zancudo, I forgot the exact weight of that one, but the Zancudo goes for like about $135 or $130. Um, you know, that's kind of, those are some comparisons or alternatives in terms of little small fixies that you might consider in there. Um, let's jump into the pros of this knife. The The blade is super, super thin. I didn't measure, but it's, it's like 0 0.08, 0 0.09. Very, very thin, like bug out thin. And the grind on it is excellent. It's a full flat grind on there comes down to a, a, a Warncliffe's style, so it basically has a whole dist full distal taper all the way to the tip there, and it just that tip is fantastic. Oh my gosh. So really, really good thing there. Um, the, the rounding of the handles was very comfortable. You can see that they have kind of nice little radius rounding on them, and even though you know it's small, it's, it's really comfortable. There's really no uncomfortable position. Um, for this knife in your hand, you know, if you, if you, wh wherever you're going for, and really that's, I think that really speaks to the handle scales, and um, that, that's kind of a good thing about this. The Kydex sheath, we'll go ahead and bring that back. The retention of this thing was absolutely fantastic. Oh, there he goes. First fantastic. Let's start counting them. You can't shake this thing out. Like I said, this was basically hanging upside down so that I could grab in a, in a quick draw on my, um, on my, my uh, camelback, and it, there was no shaking, no rattling, never loose, never. I will say I didn't crash this year. I did crash a couple times last year, but I didn't this year. And like I said, no worries about this thing coming out. So the retention is great. Uh, you know, super, super much like that. The front finger choil is nice um, for when you're actually using it. The 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 one thing on a, on a quick draw is you're kind of torn between reaching up until you hit the middle finger and then you are ready for the choil use but i think in an actual quick draw that's that's you know probably the probably the draw that's more natural and, and that kind of leads us into some of the cons on this one. Oh, by the way the jimping was really nice too so not overly aggressive but in combination with that finger choil was really good just a great little slicer and, and like i said that tip for my use case uh, you know i need something small light at the ready a very cute tip and thin so that i can actually clean out mud from my gears um, on my bike um, is really nice plus one of the things that i put on the front side is i need the ability to puncture holes in my tire because i use um i use tubeless tires and if i don't replace the the the, the gunk that goes in it that fills the holes then what, what happens is it, the ammonia starts to separate from it and it actually starts to separate the layers of the rubber. And so I need to actually puncture the outside layer of those. That's what I was doing on that particular video. Um, assuming I haven't lost that a year later or so. Uh, we'll assume not though. On the con side, I think the AR RPM 9 steel on this one is, uh, I don't know, it was a little soft, a little bit uh, giving, a little bit wimpier than some of the D2 that I had used before um, through uh, you know, CJRB and, and Artisan. And, you know, on the whole, did I mind it? No, because my use case for this, again, is something very infrequently used, but when I need it, it's handy. Um, I'm primarily using it for the tip, the thinness, um, and then the occasional, if I need to, the just in case, um, quick draw, whatever. And so in that sense, it was fine. Um, would I want to use this every day? I don't know. I think I'm going to be sharpening it a whole lot. That being said, on the flip side, it was very easy to sharpen. On the, you know, literally three minutes through a sharp maker gets this thing so it can cut through, you know, super thin magazine paper. Very easy. So not a, so, you know, like I said, it's, it's kind of everything's a series of trade-offs. But for me, it was a little bit of a con, a little bit of an un unexpected thing. That, that's all on that one. And then really the, the, the last con I have on this one is, is that there's no hole for a lanyard um, to go in. And, and I'll give an example of where on the minimalist here. The minimalist does have a little hole back here and so that you can get that in. And anytime I can't get four full fingers on or for a natural position, I can't get four fingers on. Um, and in this case, for a quick draw, you're only going to have the three fingers on. I would really like to have... 
uh, you know, one that would hang off of there would be certainly something I prefer. Um, and this one just doesn't have it. I may end up drilling that, drilling one for myself and kind of designing it like that where I, where I kind of go around the butt end of there. So other than that though, you know, as a neck knife, if you want a little something you can lash to a, a pack, small day pack, three ounces, you know, we're, we're talking like bench made bug out weights and, uh, you know, PM2 lightweights or PM3 lightweights. So it, it's very, very light. And like I said, as far as overall utility, really useful cuts really well um you know I, I definitely nothing wrong to say about it and for 50 dollars, it was a great use for a year um the one thing i will say is the g10 maybe it, let's see if it shows up um the, the g10 having so much exposure to sun you can see it kind of got a little bit of sun wash out there um, right next to that and then if i roll it over you'll see there's just a little bit less not sure if that will, sh will show through but it did suffer a little bit of um sun uh you know sun hitage if you will and, uh, but on the whole, it, really no major problems. Uh, very good little knife, the uh, Sea Snake. Hope this was of use. If it was, like and subscribe and have a great day. Take care now. So one of the use cases I have for uh, my knife that I ride with, let's start that again. <laughs> Actually, I'll just cut that out. Okay. It's on. Okay.